Welcome to Whiskey's Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. In today's video, we're going to do the top five beginner bourbons. Now, I understand that there's a lot of top five bourbon videos out there, but I want to put a little spin on this and make it my own. As I've been progressing through my whiskey journey and people are starting to recognize me as a bourbon drinker or a whiskey drinker, I get a bunch of questions about what I would recommend. So what I thought I would do is put together a five bourbon flight that I think best represents the bourbon world. And there's some criteria that I want to put into this because there are hundreds of beginner bourbons out there. So first of all, the bourbons have to come from my collection because this is going to be a list of beginner drinkers. They all have to be under 100 proof. I'm looking to keep the price down below $40, so they all have to be under $40. They all have to be relatively available, nothing allocated here. And I understand that your area might be different than mine. I just need to go from Phoenix, Arizona and the availability of these bourbons in my area. And then the last thing, I am not going to repeat any distillery. And before I get going, bourbon drinking or getting together and sharing whiskey is a social event. So at the very end of this bourbon flight, I'm also going to provide my bourbon drinker or the person that's curious about this with a special pour to compare to the original five. And that bottle is going to adhere to the under 100 proof, but that bottle is not going to adhere to the price and availability. And the last thing before I get started, I'm going to break this up into three different videos. I'm going to start with beginner bourbons, then I'm going to go into higher proofs, and then I'm going to go into like the advanced allocated stuff in my third video. If any of that sounds interesting to you guys and you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. If you like the information that I'm presenting today, give me a like. Turn on that bell notification because I'm going to start producing videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Here we go. These bottles are in no particular order with the exception of their increasing in proof. So my first bottle is Benchmark Top Floor. Benchmark Top Floor is coming in at 86 proof. This is 43% ABV. This is a Buffalo Trace product owned by Sazerac. The mash bill is mash bill number one. This is coming in at $14.99 in Arizona. So why am I choosing this one as a beginner bourbon? Well, first of all, like I mentioned before, bourbon the bourbon community is all about community and discussion and talking and dissecting and thinking about what's in the glass. And this one, I believe, is going to spark conversation about Buffalo Trace Distillery. This one just so happens to be Mash Bill 1. That's the, the recipe that goes into making the bourbon. And on top of all that, this is a very good value whiskey for the money. I mean, this is $14.99. You're getting all those classic bourbon notes. You get cherry, caramel, brown sugar, honey. It's an easy sipper and it's not going to destroy your budget. Okay, with that one being my first bourbon on the list, let me know in the comments down below what you guys would put into this top five flight for somebody that's beginning to get into the bourbon scene. And don't forget that special bottle at the end to make it six in the flight. Bottle number two, Russell's Reserve 10. Russell's Reserve 10 years is coming in at 90 proof, 45% ABV. This is coming out of the Wild Turkey Distillery owned by Campari. And this is the most expensive whiskey in this flight. This is coming in at $32 in Phoenix, Arizona. We've got a mash bill of 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. So why this one? Why not put a wild turkey in here if this is a wild turkey product? Well, that kind of goes on to the conversation again that people are really probably more familiar with wild turkey than they are Russell's Reserve. And then on top of all that, you can start talking about master distillers. On here, we have Jimmy Russell and Eddie Russell's signature. So what does that actually mean? We got a 10-year-old age statement on here. What does that mean? This is also age for 10 years in number four char barrels. What does that mean? So the conversation can go along that direction as well as you're tasting. And the taste itself is phenomenal. On the nose, for me, I get vanilla and caramel. This comes across as very creamy. I get fruit and oak, well-rounded, all around, very good. Next up on the list, this is not gonna be any surprise to anybody. Woodford Reserve is coming in at 90.4 proof. That's 45.2% ABV. This is Woodford Distillery owned by Brown Foreman, coming in at $28.99 in Arizona. Our mash bill on this is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. Even though there is no age statement on here, it's rumored to be anywhere from six to seven years old. So just like always, why am I putting this one in here? Well, this one's pretty unique because it goes through a different distillation process than these two. This is actually triple distilled in pot stills, while this 
while these two and some of the others on my list are all column still, continuous column still. And as far as nosing and tasting goes, this is probably going to be, to me, the sweetest on the nose. Strawberry sweetness and you get some deep dark notes in here. A lot of the oak is coming through as well. And just like all of the other bourbons on this list, they're very easy sippers. I don't think there's gonna be anything too offensive in this bottle that's gonna cause somebody to shy away from the bourbons. Fourth up on the list, this might throw some people, but again, this is a, a conversation starter as to why is this in the list? And I thought all bourbons were made in Kentucky. So I've got to throw in a Texas bourbon. This is Balconis. Balconis is coming out of Texas. Balconis Distillery was just bought out by Diageo. This is coming in at $24.99 in Phoenix, Arizona. And this one's an interesting one because you can start now dissecting the labels. What does it mean to be straight bourbon? What is the difference between Kentucky straight bourbon and straight bourbon whiskey? This one, like the Woodford Reserve, is also a pot still whiskey. The label on the back gives us an age statement of at least 24 months. It's not chill filtered and it's not added color. So what does all that mean? Again, a conversation piece. It gets you guys talking about the barrel influence in Texas compared to the barrel influence in Kentucky. You start to talk about climate and temperatures, coloration of the whiskey, and whether or not it's chill filtered or not, and how that affects the taste of the whiskey. And even though this is an undisclosed percentage of mash bill, but we do have Texas blue corn, Texas wheat, Texas rye, and then we have malted barley but it doesn't give us the percentages. And this one on the nose and on the palate are completely different than all of the others. We get a cinnamon spice here, followed by a very dark fruit note. The dark fruit comes across as slightly sweet and on the palate, again, much different than anything else in the lineup. And that's kind of what I'm going for here, trying to give a different perspective on all the different types of bourbon that are out there. Even though the bourbon process is pretty much basically the same, it's crazy how uniquely different each one of these can be. Which brings us to the fifth and final in this flight. This one's going to be the strongest proof. And I don't necessarily know if it's gonna be the most recognizable, but we're looking at the Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig is 94 proof, 47% ABV. Elijah Craig Distillery, this is, or the Heaven Hill Distillery. $26.99 in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're looking at anywhere from an eight to 12 year old bourbon, even though it doesn't give us an age statement on here. And the interesting thing about this one is the mash bill. In order for a bourbon to be a bourbon, it has to be at least 51% corn. And then the next grain is typically rye. But in this one, they're going a little bit of a different direction. This is 78% corn, and then we have 12% malted barley instead of rye, and we don't have any wheat in here, and then the rye is is 10%. It's aged in level three barrels, so that can that conversation can come up again. We get tobacco, cherry, and orange on the nose on this one. And then on the palate, just like all of the others, a very good sipper, well-rounded, not too harsh, nothing offensive. And the conversation around this one can be, again, the distillery itself, who is Elijah Craig, gets into the history of bourbon itself. And then you can also get into talking about all the different offerings that each one of these distilleries have. So those are my five beginner bourbons. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to post your individual five. If somebody were to come up to you and say, give me a flight, they're gonna politely ask you, I'm trying to get into bourbon. Can you create a five bourbon flight for me so I can get an idea of what this bourbon scene is? What would you guys do? What would you put in the flight? Does it match mine? Is mine anywhere near yours? Let me know in the comments. Now with that out of the way, you don't wanna just end the night with those five. You're gonna to wanna to give your friends and the people that are tasting this something a little bit different at the end. This is going to be a special bottle that's going to introduce them to maybe something a little bit different, maybe a little bit more expensive with a different profile and a different distillery. Let me go ahead and clear this out of the way and we'll get that special bottle up here. So I'm gonna go with Remus Gatsby Reserve. Now, this is going to be a special bottle that's going to either impress or not impress your drinkers. This is kind of like a flex saying, hey, this is what I have in my collection. Let's see if we can distinguish the difference between an expensive whiskey and compare it to something that is of better value. Presentation is fantastic. 
we're looking at a 15 year old whiskey here. We can also start talking about sourced whiskey, even though this is coming from Ross and Squibb, Ross and Squibb, formerly MGP, is one of those distilleries that people source from all the time. But Ross and Squibb produces their own stuff as well. And if you pour a sample of this for everybody, they may or may not be impressed. What's cool about this one is this is 97.8 proof. 97.8 proof, 15 year old, coming out of Ross and Squibb, it's their own distillate. This is cask strength, but even though it's a cask strength whiskey, that means it's, you know, typically when you think about cask strength, you're thinking of something that's extremely powerful, something like an Elijah Craig that's 120 some plus proof. And then the conversation that can revolve around this one is talking about whiskey storage, the dunnages that they're in, the warehouses that they're in, the position that the barrels are in. This one is actually coming from the lower levels of a rick house. So what's gonna happen is more alcohol is gonna evaporate from the barrel, which is gonna cause the cask strength to be a little bit lower, as opposed to a barrel that might be at the top of a rick house, and you end up getting more water evaporation, which is going to increase the cask strength. So there you go, another conversation starter, something to end the night to wow your guests or not, and it gives them something a little bit different to talk about. Now to me, on the nose, this seems to be a little bit more on the Russell's Reserve side than anything else. I think I'm getting a lot of age in here. I'm getting a lot of oak, a little bit of spice, and I do get leather and tobacco. And then on the palate, the exact same thing. And this is where you can go. As you pour this, they can go back and compare all of the other five and decide for themselves if this is actually worth the price or not. And if you need to know, to be exact, I paid 209 for this in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's a highly allocated bottle. I haven't seen this since I purchased it from a Total Wine & More a couple of months ago. I don't even know if I've seen this anywhere else other than the Total Wine & More. And there was one bottle on the counter when I got this, which again brings up more conversation about allocated whiskeys. Are they worth it? Are they worth the hunt or not? So there you guys go. That's what I got. Those are my top five beginner whiskeys, along with a kicker in the end. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you did like it and you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Share this with somebody in the whiskey world that might get an enjoyment out of it. Turn that bell notification on because again, I'm gonna start producing videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And please do not forget to put your five bourbons in a flight plus your kicker. I'm really interested in knowing what you guys think a beginner bourbon would be. And with that, I'll call this video good. Enjoy your journey. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.